Today, we will be building the secret room beneath the sarcophagus. All right, Jeremiah here, and I'm back with another episode about building a dungeon. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel for weekly inspiration. And now, let's get into that build. Since we ended up having hidden stairs leading into the darkness below the sarcophagus, I was excited to see what was down there. I knew it had to be something special, so I decided to make a small treasure room. I measure out a 4x4 grid and draw out our usual floor pattern for our dungeon. Like I said, this room would be small. The smallest we've built so far. I struggled a little with how I was going to build the wall. I knew that the room would be hard to see, let alone move miniatures around in. So I decided I would build the walls uneven, something that would give it more of a diorama look, something that says this room is different from the rest. I finally decided to use my Proxon hot wire table to cut out some 1cm thick pieces of foam, two strips of 3cm wide and two strips of 5cm wide. I figured that would cover the walls. Take note that if you are interested in purchasing any of the supplies that I use in my videos, then go ahead and check out the Amazon links down in the description. This is a list of supplies that I use, including a hot wire table like this one. Buying from these links will help support this channel at no extra cost to you and is greatly appreciated. And then I texture the floor with my piece of asphalt. I'm using more of a comparison approach to measuring out the wall sections rather than getting bogged down by measuring everything out with a ruler. As I've said in previous videos, that really slows down my creative process. Regardless, I do decide to measure out the height of the brickwork. Each layer will be one centimeter tall, and while I have my ruler out, I make sure to do this to all the wall sections before moving on to the less accurate parts of the build. I then draw out a brickwork pattern on the wall pieces with my 1.4mm ballpoint gel pen. I compare and cut down each wall section as I go. Also, I make sure to texture each piece before gluing them in place with my hot glue gun. A couple of tips on making things straight. I just use spare pieces of foam to help me align the wall when gluing in place, as well as when cutting the wall sections down to size. Using the foam as a guide didn't make those pieces completely 90 degrees, but it was close. And before I knew it, I was sliding that last piece into place. Now we're going to be working on the staircase, and I'm just using spare strips of foam I had to make that. Also, this is a pretty straightforward staircase. I'm literally going about stacking the shorter pieces on top of the longer pieces until the stairs are about the height that I want. Then when I get to the last couple of stairs, I cut out a notch of foam that would resemble the entrance of the room and then add the last couple of stairs right into that notch. This will help give the illusion that the stairs are disappearing up into the darkness. And then I glue the whole stack of stairs into place, scrape off any excess hot glue that oozed out, and texture the stairs with a piece of aluminum foil. I then take out my hobby knife and chip out some edges of the stairs and bricks. And then using an ultra fine point sharpie, I add some fine cracks. Now, I felt like the walls were still too in the way and not having that diorama look I was wanting. So I used my hobby knife to chunk out some of the brickwork and give us more dynamic looking walls. I also decided to carve brickwork into the top of the room's walls. And I added more detail to the top of those walls with my piece of road. I had a handful of 3D printed treasure chests that I got in an assortment of crates I purchased on Amazon. I figured they would be perfect for this room, so I primed them with Liquitex black spray paint, and I just affixed them to an old spray paint lid with some blue tack so they would be easy to spray. I brushed on a thick black undercoat with an old brush. The undercoating this time consists of black latex house paint and Mod Podge. This layer will both harden the build and give us a dark layer of paint to work up from. After the black undercoat dries for a couple of hours, I start to truly paint the piece. I start out by doing an overbrush of gray acrylic paint. And by overbrush, I mean just slightly load up the brush and scrub it over the surface of all the brickwork. And while I'm painting this, let's do a huge shout out to Luis Sandoval Jr for joining the Wizards Academy tier over on the Patreon page. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you supporting this channel as well as the Instagram and Etsy pages. Also, I will have your custom Lava Ice game boards finished and shipped out in a couple of days. 
If you guys feel like you're getting some value out of this channel, you too can join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you will gain access to perks such as extra footage of videos like this one, and other videos that I've done in the past. I then do a very light dry brush of Apple Barrel Antique White across the whole piece. I pick out some details in the recessed areas between the bricks and in some cracks with my ultra fine point sharpie. Take note that I don't completely outline each brick. I'm mainly just adding some depth in between half to a third of the recessed areas between the bricks. This just helps add a little bit more depth and also most likely won't be that noticeable. I then mix a couple drops of flow improver in some watered down ink and cover the whole piece in a black wash. This was a bit stronger than my usual wash, so I kept a tissue handy and dabbed off any that I was applying in excess. By then, our chest had dried and I blue tacked each one to their own dollar store shot cup, just to make them easy to handle when painting. Then I coat each chest in a layer of Vallejo Mahogany Brown. And this is, again, an overbrushing because I wanted the black to show in the crevices and the wood grains. Then with some golden titanium buff, I dry brush a highlight over each chest. As you can see, that really brings out a lot of detail in that wood grain, and that's exactly what we're going for. I then pull out my detail brush and apply an only slightly diluted layer of Vallejo Gold to all the metal parts that reinforce these chests. And as you can see, this is looking really good so far. I then set those aside to dry for a minute and go back to working on the room. But before we do that, I want to do a quick comment shout out from the last week's video. Echo Delta said, Great craft, like the secret stairs under the sarcophagus. Treasure tables are cool, but I love the sculpting of the sarcophagus lid. Thanks Echo Delta. Sculpting the lid to the sarcophagus was my favorite part of the build, so I'm glad that you loved it. And now it's time to add our dank effect to the room to match the rest of our dungeon. If you don't remember or haven't watched the previous videos, this is a mixture of black and yellow paint that was watered down to a wash. And I don't apply it all over the whole build, just randomly over about half to two thirds of the room. Now, time to add just a little bit of detail to the chest. I first dilute a drop of black paint then do some recessed shading on each chest. I'm not doing a whole wash on the chests because they have been shoddily 3D printed and I feel it would make the printer lines show where I didn't want them to. So this is also why I'm not going to do any sort of dry brushing on the gold areas. I basically add a thin line where all the gold meets the wood and pick out a few details in the metal like the hinges and the keyholes. I also noticed that there were slight traces of rivets in the side of each chest, so I decided to make those stand out a little. I added a thick black dot of paint over each of the rivets. Then with some Vallejo silver, I add a smaller dot of paint over each of those black dots. This gives us some nice details to look at, and that chest looks pretty good for something so cheap. And because my favorite person gave me a new airbrush for Christmas, I decided to add a glowy aura to where the chests were going to be sitting. I figured this would make the chest look like something extra special, plus it was really satisfying. Thank you so much, Maricela. And then I glued all the chests in place with some PVA glue, and they really do look good sitting in that glow. I was super happy with the way this room turned out. Hopefully the Chaos Standing Stones aren't too distracting. I was working on some orders while filming this and they just happened to be in the background. Anyway, here's some glamour shots of this room. And you can continue the journey by clicking on one of the links I've handpicked for you on the screen right now. 